Here we're going to look at some integration by substitution, also called U substitution. So this is where we have something in the integrand that we want to integrate that isn't just um, like a sum and difference or a constant multiple. It's something more than that. So if we were to take the derivative of it, it would typically require a product, a quotient, or a chain rule. So instead of having three separate rules for the antiderivative, it's all one nice method. The nice part is less rules for antiderivatives. The not so great part is that it's a bunch of steps to do these antiderivatives. So looking at this first one, we have three times three X plus one squared. So that would be our chain rule of a function. If we had to take the derivative of that, we'd bring down the power, subtract from the new power, keep the original on the inside, multiply by the derivative of the inside at the end. So it was one of our longer derivative rules. And that tells me it's going to be u substitution when I think about the antiderivative. So one thing we could do is expand 3x plus 1 squared by foiling it and then multiplying everything by 3. So you could do a bunch of algebra to avoid u substitution, but it would take a lot longer. So we're just going to use this anytime we see a product a quotient or a chain. We're not going to try to use algebra to manipulate it. We're going to just use u sub. So the first part of u substitution is figuring out what u is. So u is the expression that is being manipulated within the integrand. So from algebra, an expression is x with its nearby friends getting manipulated. So not the formal definition that you might expect, but x with whatever is nearby that's all getting manipulated together. So they're not going out and drinking and getting manipulated that way. Getting manipulated in math is having something squared or raised to a power or raising it from a base. Like if you have the number 2 and you raise it from a base 5, 5 to the 2 is 25. So changing it somehow using some operation, raising it from a base or raising it to a power multiplying it, dividing it, something like that. So we're going to look for basically what's getting raised to a power in this one. So x with its nearby friends getting manipulated. So for this one, we would call u that 3x plus 1. x with whatever is around it that's also getting manipulated. So it's not just x getting squared. It's 3x plus 1 getting squared. So we're going to call that u. And our second step is to take a derivative of that. So it's kind of weird that you have to take a derivative to take an integral. But we're going to take the derivative of u with respect to x. So we're going to call it du dx. And it's just going to be a regular derivative. So the derivative of 3x plus 1 is what we're doing. The nice part is it should be a very simple derivative every time. So the derivative of 3x is 3 and the derivative of 1 is 0. So we just took the derivative of our u with respect to x, and we just want to get du by itself. So we take a regular derivative, and then we're going to end up multiplying by dx to get du by itself. So now we have u, which is what the expression that was being manipulated, and we took the derivative of it, du dx, and then multiplied by dx to get du by itself. And now we're able to rewrite what's in the integrand with all u's and no x's. So we did the u part, and now we're going to do the substitution part, which I think is the most difficult part, but then it's going to make taking the antiderivative a lot simpler. So if we look at what's in this integrand, we're going to rewrite it. First thing I have is my u right here. We chose 3x plus 1 to be called u because it was what was getting squared. So this whole big piece, 3x plus 1 squared, I can just write as a nice little u squared. And that makes it a lot simpler to take the antiderivative of. We know we get to add one, put it as our denominator, and there's a new power. So it's going to be one-third u to the three. But before we can do that, we need to have our du in there. Just like we had our dx's in there, we need our du in there. It doesn't do anything besides allow us to take the antiderivative with respect to the same variable that we're already in. So I need to look at what's left over and be able to write a du. So I have a 3 and a dx left over, which is my perfect du. 
We will not always have a perfect DU. It won't be bad when we don't, um, but we'll get to that later. For this one, 3x plus 1 getting squared is going to be called u squared, and we have 3dx left over, which is perfect because that was our DU. And now our next step should be the easiest step. We get to take the antiderivative. We've made something look like a basic integral. So we're gonna add one to the power. So we have one over two plus one is three, u to the three. And normally we end with a plus c, but since we change variables, I'm gonna change that constant of integration. I'm gonna write plus k's when I'm in terms of u. And my last step is the question was in terms of x, so the answer should be in terms of x. So we are gonna write one third, and I'm gonna sub back in for what we called u, still raise it to the three, and we're gonna be back in x's, so I'm gonna write plus c. And so I just need to look back at what u was. So u was three x plus one to the third. Now we could check our answer just like we could have with any antiderivative. We would normally stop there, that's perfect, that's the answer, we are done. But if you're not feeling confident, you can check it by taking the derivative of what you just found and you should get back to exactly what was in the integrand. So I'm gonna check this real quick just because it's our first one. I'm gonna bring down the power using the chain rule, one third times three out front, keep the original inside and raise it to the two, so three x plus one. So the two and then the derivative of the inside is three. So applying our chain rule, one third of three, those just cancel out and we get three X plus one squared times three, which is exactly what we started with, right? Three times two is the same thing as two times three. So it's okay, it's in the opposite order. We got to where we started. This process does work, it is complicated. That was our first example. It is going to get easier as we go. So just bear with me, keep an open mind and we got this, it will be easy by the time we're done with 10 examples, just maybe not the first one.